Hi, my name is Dave Nimorowski, and this is my technology education facility here at Colson High School. What we have here is a, a split lab or a combination lab where we have a, uh, a clean or design side and then we have a dirty or production side. Uh, as you'll be able to see, they're not necessarily clean or dirty. We just refer to them that way so that the kids easily remember them uh, and that they know what happens in each specific area of the lab. Uh, the whole idea of a split or a combination lab is that uh, students are able to do a lot of learning and design work, uh, essentially pen and paper work, if you will, on one side, and then they could go over to the other side where they're going to be making uh, their products uh, or their solutions out of different materials and utilizing different tools and elements of that nature. What I'd like to do is expand a little bit on the network policy we have here at the Freehold Regional High School District before utilizing or obtaining a uh, network login students have to agree to and sign a network use policy. That is pretty much the overarching policy that we have for the district. Once they sign that policy and their parents sign it as well, they get a username and login which allows them access onto the computers. With that username and login, we actually are able to keep track of what sites the students go to as well as what they print. So what I'd like to do is go into a little bit more detail about the clean or design side of a technology education or a STEM education classroom. Uh, what's very important is that students have a lot of different resources available to them uh, if they're in a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics classroom so that they could really utilize and pull from all those different subject areas to develop different solutions to ideas or to at least start to think about them and understand them uh, because that's one of the key things is really understanding what it is you're trying to do. One of the things that we wanted to consider when we redesigned this facility was the orientation of the computer monitors. We wanted to make sure that the teacher is able to see all the monitors at all times. So whether I'm up and helping a student at their individual workstation or helping a student at my desk, I'm able to see exactly what the students are doing for the entire length of the period. One of the things that we'd like to do here at Colson Lake High School is really rely on a lot of free or open source uh, STEM education software such as different CAD packages or data logging packages. So some of the things that we have on our computer are free software such as ProE, which is available from PTC. Uh, we also have a host of other programs and they're all easily accessible in one folder from our start menu so that the kids know what they could go to. We have one program called GIMP, which is an open source software version of Photoshop so they could do photo editing and imaging uh, applications. We also have uh, the Lego software for the NXT uh, which came with the kit so we didn't really have to shell out money there. And if you don't want to use a software package like Pro Engineer, there are also other uh, easier applications that could be used in the elementary or even middle school with Google SketchUp or possibly uh, PTC's Pro Desktop, uh, which is kind of the predecessor to uh, the use of Pro Engineer in the classroom. Through the use of voice over IP technology, we're able to communicate very efficiently and effectively to anyone within our district as well as outside the district. I could conference call with a parent. I could also conference call with other students in other school districts and find out what it is that they're doing in their STEM classroom. Since I've already shown you how students kind of design their work, it's also important to highlight some of the ways that students create their work on the digital side. Uh, in our facility here, we have two network printers, a standard a black and white laser jet printer for printing out documentation. We also have a networked wide format color printer for printing out graphic design work, uh, pictures, brochures, things of that nature. And then we also have a vinyl cutter which will allow us to also do some graphic design work as well as some very basic 3D modeling by utilizing uh, sticky back paper and then registering several, uh, several slices of the design using register pins to build up a 3D model. Now that we've talked about the design side of the classroom, let's go into the production side and talk about all the different elements that we have in there. Upon entering the production side, it is often emphasized that safety is the number one concern for myself and all of my students. Upon entering, they'll see the shop safety rules pictured as well as pick up a pair of eye protection while they're in the production side. From day one, I emphasize safety and the biggest component to that safety is eye protection. 
Anytime a student is on the production side of the classroom, they must wear eye protection, whether they're working with machine or hand tool or material or not. Because if they're not working with something, someone else may be, and there is still the chance of injury. So before they get to work, they must put on eye protection. Here we have our eye protection cabinet, and inside you can see an assortment of different varieties of safety glasses and eye protection. Uh, for those of us that need to wear uh, regular glasses, we have eye protection that fits over your frames. And then for the majority of our students, we just have some very nice safety glasses that they could wear throughout their period. The cabinet that we have here is necessary because what happens is when you close the cabinet, there's a safety switch that will turn on an ultraviolet bulb. That ultraviolet bulb will clean and sanitize the glasses in between periods. One of the important things to have in a STEM classroom or technology education classroom, especially on the production side, is workspace. In this classroom, we have quite a bit of workspace. We have several tables throughout the middle of the classroom, as well as some workbenches up along the back windows. On some of the workbenches, we have AC power to accommodate hot glue guns or small hand tools, and on some we don't. Uh, we have a variety of different heights to accommodate a variety of different students. And you'll also notice that we don't have any stools on this side of the room. Generally speaking, they kind of get in the way. If a student feels that they need a bench to sit on, they could go to the other side and bring one over as long as they bring it back. Over in this area of the classroom, we have our hand tool cabinet. Here we have an assortment of different hand tools that the students may use for a variety of projects, whether it's constructing a CO2 car or working on our hydroponics activities. Uh, all the tools are organized in a similar manner so that we have uh, hammers together, screwdrivers together, an assortment of saws. We also have mechanic tools in a toolbox down below, so we have wrenches and pliers and different drivers as well as any clamps that we may need in the bottom. We try to make sure that everything is visually laid out easily for the students so that they could uh, get what they need and that they could also put it back at the end of the day. What I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about some of the power tools that you might find in a STEM or technology education classroom. The first piece of equipment that I'd like to talk about is a drill press. Now, a drill press is probably one of the most commonly found pieces of equipment in a STEM classroom. Before first using a drill or any piece of equipment in a STEM classroom, students should be taught how to properly and safely use the equipment. They will generally watch a demonstration, take a quiz, and then have to do a live demonstration for the instructor before they're certified to use the piece of equipment on their own. During that demonstration, they'll learn how to set up how to choose the proper bit or attachment, and then how to operate the equipment so that there is no, virtually no risk of them getting hurt. The next piece of equipment I'd like to talk about is the bandsaw. The bandsaw is used for cutting out various shapes for materials such as plastic or wood, as well as ripping the material to size. And one of the things that we highlight with all the machines is safety as the students are using it. So after taking their safety quiz and demonstrating that they know how to safely operate the machine, we make sure that we constantly remind them of different safety issues. So we have safety signs up on the walls near the machines, as well as on the machine itself, reminding them that they should always wear eye protection and how to operate the machine. Closely related to the bandsaw, we also have a jigsaw or a scroll saw in the classroom. Now this allows students to cut out more intricate details in different materials such as plastic or woods. And one of the things that you have to consider about any time that you're processing a material, especially wood, is the dust that is produced from the operation. So in order to cut down on the dust, we have several different things that we do here in the classroom. We have a dust collection system that allows us to hook up several different machines to some ductwork, and then all that waste material is collected in a container. And we also have an air filtration system that allows us to constantly purify the air and make sure that any smaller particles are pulled out of the air. The final piece of equipment I'd like to talk about is any kind of powered sanding devices that you may have in a classroom. Here we have a rotating drum sander. So not only does the drum spin, but it also moves up and down. And then to our right here, we have a combination belt and disc sander. With these two pieces of equipment, 
your students are able to pretty much sand whatever it is that they need to, whether it's an inside curve, an outside curve, or a, a flat piece of material. If you have the resources and the room, there are some optional pieces of equipment that you might want to have in your STEM production lab. One such piece of equipment is a table saw. By having a table saw, as well as a planer and a joiner, you're able to process large amounts of materials for your students to use. One source for this material might be a small millwork or architectural millwork facility nearby. They often have shorts or short pieces of scrap wood that they dispose of. This can easily be processed for suitable material for your students to use when you have this optional equipment. One other important factor that you want to consider in any STEM production facility is storage. Not only storage for your supplies, but also storage for student work. Here we have an example of some storage that you might use for student work. We have a workbench, and underneath the workbench, we have a cabinet that could be utilized for uh, a whole course or a particular section or project. Uh, this allows us to have different periods of students have different areas for their storage. In any STEM production facility, material storage is always an issue. If you want your students to have access to those materials, it's best to store them in metal or wooden cabinets in the room that they're going to be working. If you don't necessarily want your students to have access to them, you can put them in prep rooms or supply closets such as this one. A couple of other safety considerations that you will want to consider when designing your STEM production facility is emergency power shutoff. In the case of an emergency, it is always important to be able to turn off all the power equipment at once. That could be accommodated by small red panic switches located in key locations throughout the room. Another consideration is the floor. If you have a facility that has a linoleum floor, it will become very slippery as sawdust and other particles from material processing gather on the floor. You want to make sure that there is a slip resistant coating of some sort on the floor and you'll also want to make sure that each area around a power tool is marked off so that only one person is in that area at a time. Some other important general safety features that you should look for in your STEM education lab are extinguishers, fire blankets, and eyewash stations. All of these are very important and are often mandated by state law. When designing and setting up a facility for your STEM or technology education course, the benefits to a split or combination design and production side classroom are numerous. This allows you to have multiple courses of different variations in one facility. You could have a CAD course on one side and you could have a material production course on the other or you could have an innovation and invention course where students design on one side and produce on another. Mm -hmm.